Hello, 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 and welcome replay viewers and welcome live viewers. Hi there, I'm Una Doyle. I'm the founder of creativeflow.tv, business development coach and strategist for creatives. I help creative business owners to achieve the goals faster and to do it more profitably and to also do it in a way that allows them to fill their heart with pride with the creative work that they do. Now today we're talking about how being creative and passionate does not have to mean that you are broke, okay? It does not have to mean that you are broke. And I just find it, I find it sad and also like really frustrating when I'm hearing about people that are in this situation. Now, let me just uh, share this out. So if you go and share this out while I'm doing that and comment and let me know, um, you know, what is it that you do? Where are you, um, where, where are you kind of viewing from? Oh, come on, I'll get this thing out of my way. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, what is your situation with this? Have you ever been in this situation? What did you do to get out of it? And how have you actually managed to do that? So, okay, so we can have this shared out. Hey, Louise, how are you? Hey, Steve. Um, so, yeah, the, this is the thing, is that there's, there's three natural mistakes, you see, that creative people make that can keep them broke. Um, now, I've only, only got time to talk about one of them today, but if you hang fire um, and look in the descriptions and wait till the end, I will tell you about a way that you can find out about the other two, and we'll have a bit more time to go into uh, this first one as well. Um, and it's free, it's an online workshop, I'll tell you about that at the end. So, th th these three mistakes, one is requires a mindset shift, uh, one requires that you put in place some missing pieces in your approach to getting creative work, um, and the other is about I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, the other, yeah, the other is about making sure that you have got this one thing really working for you in order to attract your ideal clients and the kind of creative work that you want. Now, kind of underpinning all of this is the idea that you need to stop being a commodity. You have to be able to differentiate yourself and stand out in the marketplace. And um, because this is the big challenge that so many creatives have right now. I have like designers, web developers, photographers, um, content producers such as writers, uh, filmmakers, etc. that are all you know, not achieving the goals, the level of goals that they are setting for themselves because there is so much competition out there um, and at least that's how they feel about it, okay? They feel that there's loads of competition, that they have to lower the prices in order to um, achieve more, whereas actually the, the opposite is probably true. Okay, let me, I'm going to go into that in a few minutes, but let me first of all talk about well, what do I mean by natural mistakes? Well, the thing is, is that, um, so I use a personality profiling tool called Ignition with all my clients, and it's amazing. So there's eight different profiles, and it demonstrates the, the different kind of business models and uh, business strategies, lead generation strategies, the tasks that are best for you and not for you, and all of that. So, so many different layers of it. Um, but one of the things that's really, you know, interesting to see is that the people who are typically thought of as creative, you know, they have loads and loads of ideas, you know, often are told as children, you know, your head's in the clouds, come down from the clouds. Um, great at starting things, not always so good at finishing them. It depends, there's, there's one, one creative profile can be, but they have other challenges. They find it harder to start. <laughs> so it's, the thing is, this causes people to make mistakes in their business. And I know all about this because I made all of these mistakes myself. So I'm talking from personal experience. And um, so the thing is, is that I, I call it the creative condition. And so this whole thing about loads of ideas and starting things and not finishing. And, uh, and just being really good at at creating things, but not always being very good at leveraging what you create. Um, and that's in a number of ways in terms of internally and in how you actually work your business. So, hey, Colleen, thanks for joining. Uh, by the way, for those of you who just joined, please do share this out because I am on a mission to help creative business owners to, be, you know, to, to be successful creative entrepreneurs where they're happy, healthy and wealthy. And that's underpins everything that I'm doing. So share this out and we can get more people to experience what we're talking about here today. OK, so. Um, so yeah, the creative condition, um, the, 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 this big challenge of creating stuff is great, 
but if you don't leverage it effectively and by that I mean in terms of how you run your business on kind of inside that's more internal for you and your own systems and processes or lack thereof and uh, usually lack thereof and uh, uh, and also in terms of how you're putting yourself out there and um, now one of the reasons why people often don't uh, I'm going to talk about as well in just a moment so there's another reason why I call these natural mistakes so it's because most creative business owners have not been taught how to run a business. So they've not been taught how to attract and convert their ideal clients, how to even get clear on those things. Um, and, it, you know, so it's not your fault, okay? Now, just because you are a particular way naturally and because you haven't been taught something, that's not an excuse for not making changes. So, you know, this is something I've been working on for, for in recent years, you know, learning how to get more focused, more specific, how to stick to things, all of that really. And um, so, so yeah, it's and then this is partly what I'm doing here with these live streams is to ha is to teach people this stuff. So if you go and watch this live stream and watch all the other ones on my page as well, you're going to learn tons just from doing that, but you must make sure to apply it as well. Promise me that. Okay, so um here I said I was going to talk about the first natural mistake. Um and what it is, it's pricing according to self according to your self-worth instead of um, you know, value-based pricing, okay? That's what we call it when you're looking at, well, what is this value worth to my ideal client, okay? What does this do for them? How does it help them? You know, maybe it helps them save time or money is more convenient. Maybe it's more about just helping them to achieve aspirations. Maybe it's just about the experiences, maybe, you know, particularly with, say, something like art, you know, is it, you know, branding will help to bring new clients an increase of money, but perhaps for art, of course, you can have an increase in the value of that. But it's also about the experience that people get, you know, in, in having that piece of art. So, so you've got to understand, well, what is that worth? And the thing is, is that to somebody who doesn't really value what you have, it's only going to be worth this much, you know, and that depends on how much impact it has on them. But for somebody else, it could be worth this much. And, you know, and you could double, triple, maybe even, you know, quadruple or 10 times the prices and you will still be able to find clients who will find that, that result, that outcome valuable. And the thing is, is that you need to, as creatives, so I'm, I'm an actor and filmmaker as well as a business coach, okay? So I, I know what it's like when, you, when you're looking back, you know, I'm watching something that, you know, that I've acted in and kind of going, okay, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that was good. Oh, no, oh, yeah, I need to do that different next time. You know, we do this. But the thing is, is it's important to be doing that from the point of view of reviewing and improving, not criticizing and not taking everything personally. And I think that this personal connection between creatives and our work makes people kind of price on what they would pay or what they think it's worth relating to how they're valuing themselves. And because I think societally, um, quite often creativity um, certainly is perceived to not have had the same value as other areas of endeavor, then, you know, that, uh, and of course, people's own self-worth in terms of how they've been affected growing up, what they've picked up from society, you know, how confident or self-assured they are. And so that really causes people to, to think, well, I can only charge this. They maybe look at what their peers are doing and going, oh, well, so-and-so is charging this, so I'll charge the same. Or maybe you were doing whatever it is that you do. Like, say you were a graphic designer and you were working in a design firm for out from uni uh, and then you decide to set up on your own and you think, oh, well, I was getting paid X amount an hour, so I'm going to charge by the hour, but I'll charge a little bit more because I'm working for myself. And that just, it doesn't work. OK, it's, it's not going to allow you to have uh, to be able to spend enough time on running your business to actually be able to have that creative time. And what then happens is you, you often will end up either working all the hours that you have, 
you know because you're over delivering to people who are under you know who are underpaying you rather than being able to have really brilliant creative time blocked out every week in your calendar and being able to um uh, you know, being able to kind of put aside that time and perhaps that money to be able to invest in growing your business. Yeah, exactly, Colleen. We can't sell ourselves short. And unfortunately, that happens a lot. Um, and this, this is what I see. So there's, um, uh, I think, sorry, I'm just trying to read my notes, the thing there. Oh, yeah. So um, part of this can be about not understanding how to demonstrate the value. And this is what I'm talking about in tomorrow's class. So yeah, as business owners, we have to remember we have bills to pay and charge what we're worth and we can't do it all. Absolutely. This is the thing, the amount of times I speak with a new client and I talk to them about how they put their pricing together and they're leaving loads out. They're not allowing for holiday or sickness. They're not allowing for all the little, you know, $10 here, 20 quid there, that it costs for the different tools that you need, the software, the actual time it takes to run your business. And you know, if you're using free marketing strategies, that takes time. So, and, and it means that you probably are not gonna be able to afford to outsource, get the help you need, whether that's a social media manager or an admin person or someone to do your Facebook ads for you, or even just be able to afford to do them yourself. So. Yeah, you've got to be, be taking all of these things into account. Um, so I've got a reflection. I can't see my notes here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So one of the other things is that if you are judging your pricing on your self-worth and you then try and just put your prices up without changing anything else, the chances are that the vibe that you're giving off to your prospective client is not going to get you the results that you want because they're going to feel that uncertainty. So you've got to be absolutely certain. And I think that's part of why the process that I bring people through helps them to see the value that they have. Just let, let me give you an example. One of my clients, they had a, a they had a prospect, and um, they had uh, they had bought um, a session. This is part of how I show people how to do things. So they had bought a session, um, uh, rather than trying to sell them a whole thing. So they bought a session, and as part of that, I said, make sure you find out how much is one new client worth to them. And they found out that one new client for this particular client would be worth between a hundred thousand pounds and a million pounds. So <laughs> suddenly their prices, even though they were putting them up quite a bit more, paled into insignificance when you're dealing with that amount of money. And they wouldn't have known, they never asked that before. And if you've not been taught how to do all these little things, then, you know, if you don't have a good framework for that, then it's, it's really easy for these things, you know, not to happen. So, so there's, there's, it's partly about the inner work. It's about growing how you value yourself. It's about allowing there to be a little bit of distance between yourself and your work so that you can objectively look at that and look at it as a business and look at it as a product or a service and what is it worth to your clients. And in fact, I just had um, a message earlier today on LinkedIn from somebody who'd um, downloaded a free guide I have and um, they put up their price. I'm so excited to get the feedback. Um, because I get it from my clients, but you don't always get it from people who aren't working with you. And uh, they they put up their prices. They have an e-commerce store selling jewellery, and they put up their prices on several products three times more than they had been charging. And guess what? They're flying off the shelves. So whether it's products or whether it's services, you know, people will kind of go, "Oh, that seems too cheap." <laughs> and I think if you're too wrapped up in the work being personal to you and judging it on your own self-worth, then you're not going to be able to see it from your client's perspective. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, and, and I think the other thing is really about speaking up and not being afraid. I, we had an amazing uh, share -a today. Just just search hashtag uh, share -a um, yeah, on Periscope. Uh, you can follow me there, Creative Flow TV. And there was an amazing one today about speaking up. Um, and I think this is really important. Another client had, uh, you know, they when they when we started working together, they told me that they had. Uh, oh, were you there? Fantastic! It was fantastic, wasn't it? So they had. Um, 
uh, situations where they would be in front of a client and the client would be talking nonsense <laughs> just because they didn't know any better about their expertise and they weren't speaking up. They weren't sharing their point of view and demonstrating their value. And I think this is another reason why it's really important to have a good framework because you can do the inner work, but you've got to have the outer work, okay? The skills and the strategies and a, and a simple step-by-step -step framework to help you to attract and convert high paying ideal clients that you know will be absolutely fantastically excited about what it is that you uh, that you have okay so um uh, you know, thank you so much for watching this and if you've enjoyed this free content, I actually have even more free content for you. <laughs> so, and I go into this in much more depth into the workshop that I'm running tomorrow. So it's Thursday tomorrow that I'm running this. Um, and by the completing the this framework that I'm showing in this workshop tomorrow, my clients have doubled and even tripled their prices and their revenues, okay? Because not only are the prices going up, the conversion rates go up as well, i.e. if they're in front of 10 people, maybe they only got one or two or three of those clients before, and now they're getting more than half up to, you know, 70, 80%. So um, this is, and this is what I experienced too. So this is what you can have as well. And all you need to do is join me for this free training. It's called Three Natural Mistakes That Creatives Make That Stop You Raising Your Prices and Keep You you know, overworked, underpaid and underappreciated. So the link is in the description, go and register for that. And um, there, there will be a replay, but only briefly. So when if you can't attend live because of time zone differences or you already have another commitment, you know, another appointment booked, either move it around if you can or watch the replay, but put it in your diary to watch it because I'm only going to have it up for a very short time. Because I'm all about getting people to act. If you do not act, nothing changes. Changes. So you have to do something different in order to get a different result. I know that sounds really obvious, but you'd be amazed how many people keep doing the same thing and expect to have different results. Doing the same thing harder doesn't get you any further. Okay, so it's about spotting. Well, what is it that I need to do differently? Okay, so um, the link is there in the description. Go and book on that and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, share this out. If you have found this valuable, you know that other creative business owners will too and they will thank you for sharing this and bringing it to their attention. All right, have a fantastic rest of the day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.